Yep, Charlemagne the guy. Andrew Schultz. We are the Brilliant Idiots Podcast, back for another week of Brilliant Idiotness. And this week's podcast is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one website platform for entrepreneurs to stand out and succeed online. Start a completely personalized website with the new guided design system, Squarespace Blueprint. Choose from professionally curated layout and styling options to build a unique online presence from the ground up. Tailor it to your brand or business and optimize for your every device. Easily launch your website and get discovered fast with integrated, optimized SEO tools so you show up more often to more people and grow the way you want. Whether you're just starting out or managing a growing brand, Squarespace makes it easy to create a beautiful website, engage with your audience, and sell anything from products to content to time. All in one place, all in your terms. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash idiots to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's squarespace.com slash idiots to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Let's start the show. Hezzy! What's up? What's the word, my guy? Um... I think we were having this discussion earlier about what the best song of the whole beef was. Damn! And and you came in here singing it. I've been singing it for the last two days. My wife is now singing it. Really? I, I think my daughter, God forbid, might even be humming it. Very catchy tune. It is unbelievably catchy. And I think the winner of this entire battle is neither Kendrick nor Drake. It is Mr. Boomin, Mr. Metro Boomin. Metro Boomin. And BBL Drizzy. There's something about a medley. Oh, my God. Whenever you have a melody with something... Unbelievable. It's just like, it goes back to childhood, like with Eeny, Meeny, Miny, Mo, or A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Anytime you can sing like a melody to something... Amen. You you win. Before kids can understand words, they understand melody. And that 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 Metro booming. That Metro. BBL Drizzy. BBL Drizzy. And the funniest part about it is when he first posted it, Drake left a comment and said, yo, you making beats about my ass? Yes, Drake. Yes. You asked for that, though. That was the dumbest move that he made in the entire thing. It wasn't going up against Kendrick. It was beefing with the greatest musician of our uh, era. Welcome to the club. First of all, people have been making beats about people's asses since day one. Back that Since ass day up. one, back that ass up, you know, shake it fast, you know, uh, twist and shout. Even back in the twist day. Twist and shout. The day people was twist twisting. And shout. Twisting come on, that twist ass. Twist a little closer. Yeah, man. man come on, twist man. Twist a little closer. Yeah, that really was uh, drop it like it's hot. That was white people's drop yeah, it like it's drop hot. Drop it like it's hot is another one. Anything that got to right. do with the ass and you can make a medley to the Forget ass it. and make something that can make people shake their ass. Forget you it. win. Yeah. And BBL Dreezy is one of those things. BBL Drizzy BBL Drizzy I'm gonna tell you something man And this probably be like right, We'll be talking about this beef for a long time This is probably like the last good week of it yeah, It's like Thanksgiving it. It's over Like yeah. you know Cause Kendrick just went number one With Not Like Us on mm -hmm. Billboard He's not like us Euphoria's number three What? What? Like what? that Like that still in the top ten Drake Family Matters in the top ten <laughs> But I tell Certified you Certified pedophile <laughs> Drake Certified pedophile That's why Drake gonna have to fight Huh? Drake gonna have to fight, yo. He gonna have to put hands on him? Yeah, there's been some really good bits that have come out of this, right? Like, okay. Metro, shut your ass up and make some drums. People gonna be hitting them with that. But then Metro got people saying, BBL, BBL Drizzy. Drizzy. But then all BBL, the OVO gonna Drizzy. be getting called OVO hoes all summer long. And Drake gonna be just walking down the street. A minor! You know what I mean? Like, it's, just gonna, like, it's bad. Like, it's bad. Like, yeah. they, he might have to fight. He can't even fight Kendrick because Kendrick could just be like, yeah, you would want to put your hands on someone 5'3". Somebody might have to do something, yo. <laughs> yeah. For real. Yo, just say, I'm saying, dude, you know, he really can't. He can't. He can't. Ch Chubbs might have to. God damn, yo. Yeah, I'm saying. Drake can't even say, I got a hot 16 no more. <laughs> he, <that's>, he, gotta, <laughs> he gotta just be like, I got a verse. Uh, yeah, I, know, verse I got a that's fire really good. verse. That's yeah, really yeah, good. Yeah. <laughs> This is really, I really fucked enjoy up. this verse. I, by the way, that's the one thing out of this whole beef I don't like. Don't What's like that? it. I think that they both dropped nuclear bombs on each other for no reason. Yeah. They went to hell on each other for no reason. Yeah. Nobody wants to be labeled a woman beater. Nobody wants to be labeled a goddamn pedophile. Yeah. And it, and it just, it, it, but and, and don't call me a pedophile with, with rhythm, bro. With melody, so bro. It's too convincing. Certified lover boy, certified pedophile. pedophile. How dare you? Wah, certified. Wah, 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 wah. Wah, 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 wah. What, what, what is an Italian slur? <laughs> wah, 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 wah. <laughs> you just see four Italians walking down the street. <laughs> wah, 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 wah. That's not what Kendrick was talking about. That's a slur? Yeah, without papers. Wah, 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 wah. 
Italians used to be the Mexicans before Mexicans. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. School me. Wops. They call them Wop Dagos. Really? Yeah, without papers. And then we brought them into the fold. White people, you know, they're white people now. Black people, y'all about to be white people too. Just give it a few years. <laughs> <laughs> Just give it a few years and let there be a new minority pull hey, up. Candace Owens said, I'm way ahead of you. <laughs> <laughs> Been there, done that. <laughs> That's wild. Yeah. I didn't know that without yeah. papers. Wop, 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 wop. So... Drake is Canadian too? Yeah, he's a WAP without papers. You're going to talk into the microphone or you're just going to just sit there? <laughs> I mean, this is, it makes no yeah. sense. Talking I mean, she got to that she, mic is behind like her for no goddamn reason. Yeah. The, the, what point does that make? Come on, yo. Let's do no, 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 no. Get in here. Let's talk about this. Damn it, Taylor. Let, Taylor. <laughs> well, wait, I want to know about your Mother's Day before y'all go. Oh. Your first Mother's Day. Oh, how was my first Mother's Day? Like with, with wife? your wife, yeah. It was honestly. <laughs> I'm glad you recognize you that who the real mom is in the fucking relationship. Thank you. For good, for about time. You know what I mean? Thank <laughs> you. What? 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 You know what I'm saying? The daddy and the mama. Facts. Caitlin, nigga, what's happening? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. Pink Caitlin energy over here. What's up? <laughs> okay. What's happening? Damn Caitlin, it. Caitlin. What's up? It's nah, not it's still about it was good. his wife, but we had a great you, time. I mean, we had a great time. We did some cool fun stuff. It's 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 tricky because I think your first Mother's Day, and I can't speak for all for all moms, they're not really ready to leave the baby just yet. So doing things is like you're going to dinner, but you still want to come back. Or you're going to lunch, you still want to come back and be with her. You, we went and got like some massages and did a little like a bathhouse thing. But, you know, she wants to come back immediately. So we're not at that point where they're looking for the break. I think your, pro your wife's probably at the point where it's like. Definitely wants to break. Hmm. <laughs> you got to hold it. You got to be mommy on Mother's Day. And I feel so hypocritical doing that. Wait, why? Because. Honestly, on Mother's Day, it's a day where you give your wife a break, right? Like, you hear a lot of women say, I just want a break. I just want to mm -hmm. be able to go just do something by myself or just be left alone, yada, yada, yada. So when you're doing that, all you're sitting there thinking is, why don't I do this all the time? <laughs> yeah, why, yeah, why don't I like, take care of these children? Yes. yes. <laughs> I gotta take care of these. Kids. I gotta take care of these kids. Yeah. Like, why am I don't? Why don't I do this more often? Yeah. Like, so that's really right. what it is. You should find ways all the time to make every day, you know, feel like Mother's Day. My kids aren't. My kids are cool though. Like, you know, like I got three young ones. The fifteen year old, she's off to the races on her own. Mm. But then it's the eight year old, the five year old, the two year old. They're not really hard to deal with. Mm. You know what I mean? It's two year just, old isn't tricky. Nah, really? not mine. It's just about they want what they want and they can tell you what they want. Right. Hey, diaper, change the diaper. That's it. Run it you up. Know, food, cool. You yeah. know, like, so it's not difficult. It's just that you just have to, us guys, like, we really like doing nothing. Mm. And that's what our wives want to do. There's nothing. Nothing. See, do you believe that or do you believe that they think they want to do that? And no, then they the second they, they do it, they're like, uh, I don't no, like this. Wouldn't. I need things to do. <laughs> no, I think no, women need constant distraction. They're like built for multitasking. So if they can't do anything, they freak out. <laughs> yeah. Whereas we're not built for multitasking. We're built for do one task and then chill the fuck out. The worst thing a man, well, not the worst thing. What men, what, what we like to resort to is what? Ask your mother. Ask your mother. Mm. So when. Because we don't want to deal with our ass too. That's right. When mothers do having a break. Yeah. Now I got to deal with it. Yeah. I'm just trying to lay here and watch the game. Exactly. You know? Daddy, I want a cracker. What the fuck? And whatever I do, she's going to disagree with anyway, exactly. so fucking ask her. I'm the type, yo, listen. Now she angry at both of us. My, my two-year-old, she wants a cracker. I already know what to do. I'll go get like five or six of them, put them on a plate, and just sit, sit on the floor as I'm watching the game. And then five minutes later, daddy, I want more crackers. I'm like, there's no way she ate all them goddamn crackers. Crackers gone. Wow. Devoured. So that's the, it's those little constant having to get up, never being able to actually just sit and relax. That's what your wife actually wants. Yes. That's what she wants is a, when, when she says she needs a break, that's what she means. But she just Why wants that just for a day. Why you grab the box so you don't have to keep getting up? Because I don't want my daughter to be fat. Yeah. You don't have to say yes all the to time. To give her a whole <laughs> box of crackers? No, of I'm crackers? saying when you know she's going to want more. Is that you what used her? to happen to you, Taylor? No, that's not what happened. But I'm saying, you're saying you didn't want to get back up. Did you get her more crackers? Yes. Okay, so why don't you just grab the box and be new? No, no, because if she sees the whole box, then she's going to want the whole box. Mm, that or is Or just fast. hide the box. 
It's Where? Y'all making it real difficult than it needs to be. That's they not a like very us. lesbian they term. They not like us. Don't be using lesbian they terms like talking us. about my little daughter, yo. You never know. Hide the box. That's what, never know. That's what lesbians who haven't box, told their parents. Feeding her crackers, bro. She gonna be a lesbian. They ain't a white girl. You better be damn careful. <laughs> <laughs> you better be careful, yo. I'm telling you. You better be careful now. Salute to Kendrick, though. Number one song in the country would not like us. Wap, 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 wap. The battle is officially over. We already knew it was. We knew it was when... First of all, we knew it was when we heard uh, Heart Part 6. We knew it was over. Mm. And then Top Dog said it was over. And then, you know, Drake all but said it was over this weekend, too. But this is a great end to it. Not Like Us, number one. Euphoria, number three. Mm. Uh, Family Matters was up there. Drake's record as well. Great ending to an epic rap feud. Now, when the dust settles, all we're left with is pedophile and wife beater allegations. Mm. I didn't even see the wife beater shit sticking, to be honest with you. <laughs> I like because the, the I think the pedophile one is so absurd. Like I don't think anybody really believes. Big Jokers, saying that's all it was. Exactly. Kendrick could just drop every time Drake would drop a little Joker. Big Kendrick joke. would come with a big. big joke. He'll go further. So but no, here's, a, but here's the him. thing. I think the the thing about the pedophile thing why it's perfect is because. I don't think anybody really believes Drake's a pedophile. And since they don't believe he's a pedophile, you can make jokes about it. Yeah. Whereas people might believe Kendrick did that, and that's not funny. But mm -hmm. someone who's not a pedophile calling them that is funny. I think that that's we just live that. Do, do you know what I mean? Like, that's a great, that's yeah. a great point. Because there's no victim with Drake. Like, there's no person. That, if there was an accused, right? Yeah, yeah, with yeah, Kendrick, yeah, yeah. there's an accused. There's a woman that you that you know exists in real life. So making jokes about it, you're like, nah, that woman is there. Yeah, she got yeah, a baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Drake, you just throwing pedophile out there with no victim. With, there's nothing more funny than that. You know what? You know why? No one's hurt. You know why Andrew's point is so great is because it's the same thing with the allegations of Dave Free being. Uh, the father. The father. Yeah. Because you, it's, it's, you're talking about actual people. So once again, there's a woman involved. So this woman is being accused of getting hit on, being accused of having babies by people's best friends. It's just like, whoa. It's too hard. Like, you don't nobody, want, yeah, ain't nobody yeah, want to yeah, joke yeah, about yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So a, and that's yeah. a calculation, bro. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? No, you're absolutely right. You're 100% right. And it's, it, I don't know, man. I just feel like Drake's going to have to fight somebody this summer. Somebody in an owl hoodie going to have to fight somebody. Yo, it's going to be people in owl hoodies fighting, bro. Because if you just got the hoodie on, if you got on any OVO paraphernalia, somebody going to call you an OV ho. Yep. And then what you going to do? What What would you do? You got to fight. Yeah. You got to. The owl's on the line, baby. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to fight. Somebody call you an OVO. You can't even wear your OVO gear in peace. <laughs> oh, my God, yeah, man. It's, it's, gonna, be it's gonna be bad this summer, yo. Fuck. It's gonna be bad. Listen. Do you think it's gonna affect sales of their clothing? Doesn't even Nike collab coming out? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. That has a different name, and there's no owl on it. Okay. I don't know if it'll affect sales of the clothing. I just know, man, don't be on these college campuses protesting in OVO gear this summer because that's going to cause too much problems. <laughs> All right? <laughs> okay. Yo, that's it's going to cause point. too much confusion. Yeah, if you're on a college you campus yeah. with an OVO hoodie on and you out here pro-Palestine. But you got the Jewish dude's hoodie you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah, it's a lot of it's a lot of mixed <laughs> and, uh and you gotta emotions. have and by the way, you gotta have priority. Somebody call you an OV ho while you're protesting. Oh no. And then you get mad at that and decide to fight over it. You don't really care about what you're protesting about too much. Because one should trump the other. Exactly. That's all have, I'm saying. There's one issue that's way more important. It should be. You gotta lock in. You gotta lock in, baby. But they don't. Let's do some all memes necessary, Taylor Gang. Taylor, what do we got? <sighs> we got the new R&B artist. <laughs> Man, stop it. <laughs> Y'all be hating. Son. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all just be hating. <laughs> nah, that shit was fire. Bro. That shit is fire. Hating. That shit is fire. Nah, I ain't gonna lie. That shit is for hard. Y'all just bro, be that shit hating, fire, bro. bro. You know what I'm saying? No, can't nobody look fake deep in thought better than me. You hear me? Okay? <laughs> look how concerned I look. Hands up. Okay. I know why you got your hands up. Because the fucking photographers, I hate photographers, by the way. And, I, and listen, I respect photographers and everything that y'all do, but I don't <laughs> like photo shoots. I hate them. There is nothing more, like, in all, there's nothing more, like, not organic than sitting around and somebody like, put your hands yeah, like this. Yeah, it's inauthentic, yeah. You know? Cross your hands. You know, put your hand under your chin. And listen, I'm like, what the fuck, yo? 
I'm just trying to. Can we just take the pictures and get the fuck on? But did you think you looked handsome? I always think I look handsome. I'm 90s fine. This I am sure of. <laughs> this I like am this sure. I'm sure. Of. It's like like <laughs> yo like sure when you of. think about like fine people from the 90s, the <laughs> Lorenz Tates sure of. of the world, the Mars good. Chestnuts. <laughs> Who else did they think that was fine in the 90s? The Tay Diggs. Yeah. I'm right there with them. Now nah, you are. I could have been a 90s black rom com legend. Yeah, you the hottest, bro. Easily. You the hottest. There's not a there's not a black movie you can name that you I couldn't have been bro. in. You fine, bro. I could have been in the yo, wood. Yo, you fine, bro. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I could have been in brown sugar. Yo, yo you fine. I could have been in Love been Jones. Brown sugar. Don't Why I couldn't have been in brown sugar? Nah, cuz Tay Diggs already took over that. Man, though. please. Nah, I think he would have got the I no. think he would have been the hard for that. Easily. No. I could have been in Waiting to Exhale. No. Oh, absolutely. Come on, man. Yeah, he Waiting to Exhale absolutely. Yeah. I fit the Mold. Dude. Smooth but not... brown skin, bald head. Uh. What about the beard, though? Who needs a beard? Yo. They didn't have beards in the 90s. You got pride, bro. Huh? You got power. <laughs> you was a badass mother. Don't take no shit from nobody, bro. <laughs> Yo, just repeat after me, bro. You have pride. I don't know what that means. <laughs> you have pride. <laughs> you, you, have have you have power. You have power. You was a badass <laughs> mother. That don't take no shit from nobody. nobody. <laughs> You're cool runnings, bro. You the fifth one in the box. <laughs> yeah. the I could have been in cool running. You could have been in cool running. Yeah. Little Dreadwing. Yeah. You could have. There's not a black movie in the 90s I couldn't have been in. You Look could've. at that. Press play on that, that shit. You Watch this, You could have been the bobsled. Look at you. This the trailer. Look at this. Huh? You look like you don't know what you're doing. Nah, I tell you. Nah, nah, just nah. Kinda, nah. Nah, 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 you ain't. Nah, tell you ain't. Nah, nah, tell you ain't. Look at your hands. You know what you're doing. That shit is buttery. Me and my wife laughed at this video so much. My wife was like, I would have walked up to you and said, you look like you got a lot on your mind. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is going to go down in history, this picture Listen, right here, bro. That's a photo shoot I did for the New York Times. I did an interview with the New York Times. Yeah, that was uh, the title is Charlemagne the God Won't Take Sides. Uh, Lulu, salute to Lulu. She did a great, great we had a great conversation. And uh, people, the right did exactly what I knew they were going to do with this article. Okay, set that up. Well, so, what'd you say article, in the air? Yeah, I mean, I'm just talking, because she was asking me about different things that I've said and, you know, how, you know, it causes a lot of conversation, it causes backlash, yada, yada, yada. And I was just simply talking about media and the role that media plays in the current era that we're in. And I feel like I put all the blame on the media. And the reason I put all the blame on the media, because I don't believe that there's one thing that's all wrong. I don't believe that there's one thing that's all right. But everybody simply has a narrative to push. And people care more about ratings than they care about anything motherfucking else. So I was like, yo, and I told her in this interview, I said, I'm going to do this whole interview. And I'm going to tell you that the media and, you know, like the right will take certain narratives. And, and it's not like they're lying. Cause I do, I did say these things, and then that exact thing. So, happened. so they'll take that one thing and put it out, and then the left will attack that, and literally that's what happened. I haven't seen nobody from the left attacking it, but I don't be on Twitter, so I don't pay no attention. But Fox, what, did, what did the right take? And uh, hold on, let me look up some of the headlines. I love it. Let me let me see. I mean, it's, listen, it's not like I didn't say these things, so I'm not gonna act like I didn't say these Gosh. things. I did say these things. It's, okay, so. Fox News, Charlemagne the God blames the media for division, says voters can choose crooks, cowards, or the couch. The Daily Beast, Charlemagne the God won't come out for Biden after getting burned with 2020 endorsement. Uh, media, I, Charlemagne the God won't endorse Biden after being burned in 2020. Calls Republicans crooks and Democrats cowards. New York Post, Charlemagne the God takes shots at the media, calls Republicans crooks and Democrats cowards. So that's all true. But I'm not taking shots at media because, as Lulu said, I am media. I'm just challenging us, the media, to be better. Yeah, what's wrong with that? Let's learn to be objective. Let's learn to have some nuance. If somebody on the right says something good, why can't you highlight that? If somebody on the left says something bad, why can't you highlight that? You're asking for less tribalism. Way less tribalism. I think tribalism has ruined everything because how do you know Who's being honest? They're not being honest. Isn't that fucked up? Bro? Everybody, yeah, it is. everybody's just grifting. That's the thing. Not everybody, but most people are just grifting. Mm -hmm. And right now, grifting is so easy because the internet tells you where the grifts are. Before, back in the day, being a grifter was hard. You had to guess what the people thought. You know, so you just had to. You had to write a book. Or yeah. You had to write an article. Yeah. You do a radio show and just yeah. hope, hope that yeah. people were into it. Yeah. Right now, YouTube, the algorithm is going to tell you exactly what people want. Twitter is going to tell you exactly what people want, and then you just form your opinions 
off of that if that's all you care about. And please believe most of these motherfuckers out here, and I'm just not talking about the news. Most of these people creating content are grifters. They're not exactly because all they want is the attention, the money, and the clicks. They're not. They don't have anything authentic that they care about. Nothing. And they're not willing to lean into their authentic creations and take the hit on the views. And they won't even remotely say anything that they think is going to ruffle the feathers mm -hmm. of their base. Mm -hmm. Are Every, there everybody all of a sudden a big uh everybody knows everything about Israel Palestine. This conflict's been going on for 70 fucking years. That's right. You haven't heard a peep about this shit from 90% of people, right? It's not like this war just started. Yeah. It's not like these circumstances have just begun. But all of a sudden a lot of people talking about it. Why do you think that is, Charlotte? Do you because think that they it just brings it, clicks and it oh, brings engagement? Oh and I'm not saying that you know there's oh. not people who haven't been energized because of the images that they're seeing. I believe that there are people like that too. Sure, but those images have existed for years. These right. conflicts have existed for years. It's just all of a sudden, now there's a lot more. And here's the thing. I think there are people that don't even know that this is the reason why they're doing it. Oh, they might that. be oblivious to their own actions. I believe that. I but, believe right? that. but there are people that are looking at their numbers and going, oh, this is up. Oh, yeah, we're talking only about this right now. Listen, there's, there's people who don't even care about certain things depending on who said it. I literally was just having this conversation earlier because somebody sent me this video. They sent me this video of, uh, did you see Gary Owens on Shannon Sharp show? What was he saying? Oh, I'm, I'm going to let you hear it. They, 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 let me see if I can find a clip. Yes. This, uh, this is, it says, Kevin Hart can be canceled, not oh. Cat Williams, Chappelle, and Andrew Schultz. Mm -hmm. But this is not what they took from it. They sent me a tweet where somebody said, do you not understand how fucking embarrassed you should be for a white man to be comfortable enough to say this to you as a black man? And this is what it is. They don't have these corp corporate deals. Kevin's got to be careful. And I'm sure there's some things he wants to say. Right. But he ain't trying to mess up that check. I, I just, just like you. You don't defend black women. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm, lie, I'm sure like Wrangler's about to call you. John Deere. <laughs> oh. What do you want? Alex, tell me what you're warring for. I need to know what you want. Maybe I'm missing it. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm not Mr. Sensitivity over here, so I don't know. Yeah, yeah. What, what do you want about? It was just uh, a bit strong of him to say, like, you don't ever defend black women. And maybe that is the case, but for him to feel that comfortable to say that, like, it's kind of crazy. Alex Taylor. It's Gary Owens. He's a comedian. There is nothing. First of all, the whole point of the joke is the fact that he knows it's going to make Shannon uncomfortable. Yeah. It's the same reason when I used oh, to I do Uncommon Sense, Jesus Nice used to always say, Charlamagne the God hates black women in front of Crystal. Yeah. <laughs> okay. He knows what that's going to do. Or he would just tweet it out sometime. Charlamagne God hates black women. Did it so much to the point that motherfuckers actually started running with the narrative. Right. Okay. Yeah. But on his own show, I think Shannon Sharp could have laughed and then be like, "No, nah, let's not do it. like or say it's something." It's just a joke. Who cares? Like, what does he have to do? But my point I is, give the, per too the much. person who sent that to me, right, in the group chat, somebody goes, "Man, stop!" <laughs> right. And the other guy goes, "But he just giggled." And so before I said anything, he was joking. Uh, Gary, funny. <laughs> it's not. This is somebody else's words, not mine. Woke women souring. I'm, I'm gonna say women. He didn't say women. <laughs> he, said, he, said, he, said, woke women. he said woke women souring on Unc, and that's cool because they don't like none of us anyway. And so I go, it's a joke. What was Shannon supposed to do? And then I said, all those woke people on Twitter been lost their minds. Worst people to follow or listen to, but so many people care about what they think, and that's why folks be on podcasts and TV sounding crazy because they be pound pandering to them. And that's literally what it is. Hmm. There's no reason for that to upset anybody. You got to know Gary Owens Also, is Gary is probably making a joke about what's happening on the internet. Yes. That's what I'm saying. That's like his, he's that's... taking internet sentiment and he's just making light of it yeah. to Shannon. Because he doesn't who, really believe it. Because, and who's, I think maybe because I who's been on Shannon's ass the past couple of weeks about not protecting I guess that's it. black women? Yeah. So yeah, so he's just, this is Gary's way of going, hey, I'm paying attention to what's happening on the internet. I'm paying attention to your world. It's almost his way of like patting him on the back. Like, I'm not just here as somebody who's doing an interview. I'm a fan of the I'm show. I'm a fan of you yes. and what's going on in your life. And it's just, it's a, it's a good And that's why joke. I'm sure Shannon laughed because it's not just, oh, he's insulting. 
insulting me, he's like, oh shit, he's been following what I've been yeah. going through. Yeah. But there, there is a little truth in the joke. No, it's not. It's no truth in the I joke. Mean, say Why that. is there truth you, in the you, joke? Well, let's, Al, what is the, what is the truth? I just, so we don't expect everybody to be uh, civil rights activists, but Shannon isn't really the type that really stands up for social causes. So it's like, he's just like, and that's perfectly fine, but I think he's point, um, Gary was pointing that out. And there was a little truth in but that. What social cause, what social got to do cause did he not women? step up for black women? I mean, he's taken a lot of heat from black women from uh, the Amanda Seals episode. That's the only the one. I was gonna say, like, I'm that's just, literally the only one. But what it and, what, and, 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 and it's one person saying that. Happened? Nobody ever had that narrative about Shannon yeah, before this that. This is a brand ever. New, yeah. Monique was just on there having a ball. Yeah. You know, and everybody was like, yo. Shout out to Shannon for giving Monique a platform. Also, when Cat Williams Monique express herself, when Cat Williams was talking shit about all the other comics, was there the narrative out there that Shannon doesn't stand up for black men? Yeah. Exactly. Like it's just <laughs> what, what I'm saying is like this is a perfect example. There there are groups of people on the internet, right? And their currency is a feeling or a sentiment, right? That's it's right. not just these women who are like you're not standing up for black women. There's tons of different people out there, and the currency is. You're not in this specific group. It's you don't stand up for black women. There are there are people out there whose currency are uh, conservatives are getting canceled, right? That's their currency, and they wake up every morning and they go, "How are conservatives getting canceled today?" Or, uh, Fox News wakes up every morning and they're like, "How can we justify our point of view, especially from the other side?" Oh, the biggest guy in hip hop media is saying things that we might agree with? Academics. You know what I'm saying? They're yeah, taking yeah, yeah. you either in context or out of context, and they're like, let's go do it. Same thing's happening here. There are people in there, their currency is black women are not being stood up for. They get the most clicks, they get the most views, they get the most money because they can monetize the videos that they put out about it. So they find the most popping podcast on the planet, they take excerpts out, and they create this narrative, and they cash that shit up. <laughs> they go to the bank. But maybe, and, and, maybe I didn't have enough context. I thought he was getting at the point of just making a comparison why Kevin Hart has to watch what he says because it's like, hey, you have a lot of big sponsors so you don't really speak out against certain issues because you don't want to alienate but, any community. Same way like how Drake is getting shit because he's never spoken out because he doesn't want to alienate any Alex, community. you're making sense, but the problem is Gary wasn't making sense and, cause, and he wasn't making sense on purpose because that's not a social cause. Like, like he was conflating two different yeah. things. That yeah. was just a joke to throw out He's there. Just making it, a it, was joke. A, it was a fucking grenade. Just yeah. to fuck with Shannon. Yeah. You don't protect black women. Uh, and yeah. everybody jumped, oh my God. <laughs> y'all jumped when y'all heard it. Yeah. Because when you put when you just say that line, you don't protect black women. That's it. It could have been about yeah. anything. I yeah. personally didn't even if you know say that, that to me right now, I'm like, ah, ouch. <laughs> if, if, if Shannon Sharp, if Shannon Sharp said, Man, that Caitlin Clark girl is really good, Gary could have also went. You would think she's good because you don't protect black women. Yes. <laughs> it's the same yeah. joke. Yeah, yeah. Are you, are, you don't think Angel Reese is good? Why Angel Reese can't be yeah, good? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, what the fuck? What exactly. got to do with the other? That's it. Listen, Jesus, is, Jesus was ahead of his time. <laughs> Jesus was, used to cook. Oh, my, my God. And I'd be like, why the fuck is Jesus saying this shit? But he, he, would, he was saying this shit way back when because he knew how to get that goddamn pot riled oh, up. Oh, yeah. Because, and my dumb ass. We ain't like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do this just to make this to just this to, be fun. Just piss Crystal off. Yeah. Say yeah. wild, crazy shit. Like, nope. No. <laughs> then that no. shit became real. That's what happened. Narr <laughs> no, narratives become real. People yeah. start believing this shit. He hits you with the wop, 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 wop. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> now, that's why narratives are so crazy, right? Because you build it up, right? So he say that, he say that, he say that. I take one picture with Tommy Lauren. Oh, forget it. You're done. And put it in black and white and quote a Trevor Noah joke. Put it on Instagram. Do you see color? <laughs> Game over. Charlamagne ain't never been here for black women. Charlamagne ain't don't care about black. What the fuck? Because mm -hmm. I took a goddamn picture in black and white and was quoting a comedian? That's why I don't quote, quote comics no more, yo. Unless it's Eddie Murphy from Raw. Okay. Half. Half. <laughs> Half. Eddie. <laughs> Eddie. But nah, narratives are ruining us, man. Yeah. That's why That's why the shit that's happening with Drake is fucked up. Because there are people that want to believe it. Because the way that people's minds work is just whatever they feel, they want confirmed. That's right. They're not looking for information. They're looking for confirmation. So if you don't want Drake to be on top and then somebody feeds you all these reasons why he shouldn't That's be, right. you're not even going to look and fact check. That's because right. you don't want to fact check. You nope. just want whatever you feel to be confirmed. Confirmation bias, baby. Yeah. Like, we literally live in a world of confirmation bias. Somebody's been talking to me all week why about... Why is Drake dressed as yeet? 
He's going, he's going, he's going it through right it right now, now, now bro. Right now, yeah. Man, Drake ain't. You think Drake bothered? Drake ain't bothered Drake by none of this. Absolutely bothered. I don't think so. You don't right? think Drake? Absolutely. Bothered. Why do you think he's bothered? Bro, he he he's Kendrick been number one. Mister, the popular him. guy for the so past what? ten years. What do you mean? So no what? haters. Nothing's gonna change. I'm just saying. What do you mean no haters? He hasn't had this level of hate. Yes, yes he, he has. has. Oh, he has it. Yes, he what has. What are you talking about? Okay, yes, yeah. he has. It's just not, it's, I mean, it's not I don't think it's about now. that. I don't think it's that the level of hate has changed. I think it's the fact that his supporters, I think these are the two things. One, his supporters are like, yeah, our boy lost. And two, nobody came out to support no, him. No, still trying to say he, he won. No, nobody nah. in their right mind thinks so. No, no, no. Yo, there's, no, there's not a human it's, being it's on it's trust, trust me when I tell you this. Drake is going to, he's in Turks and Caicos now, minding his goddamn business. He's going to come out with some records this summer. They're going to be jamming. And, and everybody going to be right back on his dick. Exactly. The internet, the, like the algorithm, all algorithms do this. I'll ne By the way, you motherfuckers, don't act like... Four or five weeks ago, y'all didn't hate J. Cole. Remember that? Oh, yeah. Remember when yeah. it was, J. Cole is over. Yeah. He apologized. His career is done. Oh, you, never, you can never do that as a rapper. Now, four weeks later, J. Cole made the right decision. He's the I think J. J. Cole, he's the smartest <laughs> man ever. He's the smartest person in this whole beef. <laughs> fuck these niggas and their algorithms. <laughs> right? That's what the fuck I be trying to tell y'all over and over and over. Nobody even believes the words that are coming out their mouth. That's how I can tell all of y'all was followers in school. None of y'all was ever cool in school. None of y'all ever created your own waves. All y'all did was follow trends because there's no way social media can influence you that easily. But they, but that is the fact. And that once, here's the thing. Most people don't even like entertainers. Those entertainers just offer them utility. That's right. So right now, the utility that Drake is offering people is an awesome beef. And you're getting to see someone who is at the top get knocked off their pedestal, That's which right. everybody loves. Come summer... They're gonna want some songs to dance to. Yep. And you know who happens to be one of the greatest musicians ever? That half a Negro from Canada. That's right. And you know what he's gonna do? He's gonna put out some summer bops. And now all of a sudden, it's summer, they're dancing. They don't wanna hear Kendrick's thoughtful stuff about his family and what it's like being a black man and the experience that he's gone through. They're like, no, I need ass on my waist. <laughs> and you know who makes the ass on my waist shit that I fucking love? That's right. That Aubrey Graham guy. That's right. And the so way, once, that's go, right. The way climate change is going is too hot for activism. It, it by, is. By the time June come around, they're gonna wanna be outside half Ooh. naked, yep. dancing, yep. drinking, having a good time. We mm -hmm. also saw that Kendrick can make a bop too so does not discredit him too much. Kendrick Ben can make a bop. No, I, but you make I, it seem like he's just going to keep talking about activism and all that. Like, no, you know. Taylor, cut it out. You, I love I'm Kendrick just saying. to death. But what I, Kendrick ain't, can't, when it comes to the bops. No, you're right. Drake has and it. You know but that. I'm just saying Kendrick made it clear too he could do it. I'm just saying. He could do it if he's talking about pedophilia. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't necessarily want to hear that in the club either. Yeah. I love the record, on, by the yo. way. But it's about pedophilia. Yeah, we don't yeah, want you know to dance saying? to that. You dance to a grown ass girl. Niggas are already dancing song? to that though. Say again? They're already dancing. Yeah, they're sea walking. No. Yes. C stands for child. And by the way, they're dancing they're, they're, in a lyrical battle, they're dancing on a grave. That's, yeah. that's really what they're doing. They're dancing on a grave. It's not like they're just, you know. Dancing the dance. By the way, I love the record. I think it is fantastic. I think it's gonna go down in history. It's one of the greatest disc records of all time. I remember Glasses Malone. That's what all Glasses kept saying prior to Not Like Us. He was like, we getting a whole lot of music, but we ain't getting no jams yet. Meaning like, we ain't get a no Vaseline. We ain't get us a hit em up. We ain't get us a ether yet. And, and we were from both sides. Mm -hmm. I thought it was gonna be Drake first. It nope. Ended up being Kendrick. All they I'm simply like saying is... They not like us. Every, and, and by the way, this is the way the world works. This, and, I, and I really mean this sincerely. This is what I talk about in my, my new book a lot, Get Honest and Die Lying, Why Small Talk Sucks. You, everything is an algorithm now. And the algorithm literally shifts every day. Mm -hmm. So the same way people act like... You might wake up on a Monday and somebody like Drake, everybody hates him. So you really think after 15 plus years or however long it's been, hundreds of millions of records sold, you think people just off Drake because of a rap feud? Are you crazy? And why? I don't think that will happen, but it's not impossible. Because it happened to Ja Rule, it happened Stop. to me. But he's not, it's Stop. not the same Bro, thing. It, it's it happened not to Ja Rule, thing. it happened ja Rule to Meek. Was, Wayno made this point and it it's true. It happened to Meek. Meek never had it like Drake. Yeah, we're talking Meek about... Never had, Meek never had it like Ja Rule. 
Ja, and by, by the way, Ja Rule's run was five years. Yeah, Drake's and run is 15. 15. Yeah. Drake That's... has a cult-like following. The way people love these guys is way different than anybody ever loved yeah, Ja Rule. I'm, I'm saying it's very unlikely it will happen, but let's just not say it's impossible for it not to happen. I mean, he needs I mean, to come yeah. with good music. Yeah. There's no question that he needs to come with good music. He could do nothing. Nah, and then just tour the shit that he, he already exactly. got. Exactly. Yo, you, 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 Drake, there's no Drake could walk through Manhattan right now and get mobbed. Oh, that's true. Like, what are we talking about? Like, like you know, like Drake could walk anywhere in the world right now for the most part and get mobbed. Probably anywhere other than Compton. True. You know what I'm saying? Drake could walk to the Beverly Center right now and get mobbed. Yeah. In LA. But like yeah. it's not like the love. Like, don't let the internet fool you. Like, he's just having a bad moment. And it's not even really bad. It's just that there's a certain group of people, a lot of people, who we know Kendrick won, and people are just off him right now. Hmm. Yeah. And not, I even, mean, not even off him. It's just a good time to clown him is what I'm saying. I mean, yes. I, I was in L.A. I did the show at Staples. I asked the crowd. I was like, who had Kendrick win? This is L.A. Staples. Kendrick, people went crazy. I Then I said, Drake. Initially, people cheered. Not as much as Kendrick, but keep in mind, we're in downtown LA. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then the pro Kendrick people started to boo Drake. But it wasn't like it was nobody. You were there. Yeah. It wasn't like it was nobody. Like, I was actually surprised how many people, even in LA, were like, you know yeah, why? Drake got it. Because we paid too much attention to these. Exactly. And Bro, these, these, these yeah. have us thinking that everybody's best. Yeah, this guy, guy's getting clowned. Man, no. Please, dude, walking in right now, you ask for a picture. Mm hmm. Straight up, right now, Alice would be the first one. You would, yeah. I'm a Drake fan. I don't care. You like would. I'm, not, I'm not swayed. Like Taylor that. too. I would too. I'm not saying I win it. So I that's so you're like right. Him. So the internet. But when it comes to Kendrick, don't play my boy. That's all. You wouldn't even tell Drake you a Kendrick fan. I bet I would. No, nope. I bet you I bet would. I would. I bet you would. I bet I would. Why I bet would you, you would. do that? Why would you ask for a yeah, picture and then say I'm a Kendrick fan? That's mad disrespectful. Like I hate when people do stuff like that. I don't really like you, but you know. You just said if I I would do it if you dared me to, yeah. But why would you want a picture with Drake? I never said I didn't like Drake though. Yo, people do ask for <laughs> pics in weird ways, bro. I wouldn't be surprised. Like you ever have someone be like, "Yo, I had no clue who you were, and then I just found you." Yeah, because I hate that. If everybody, yo, just that's we, right. I, you don't you know need to say that. Drake, like, I'm say, I'm sorry. Fuck? I'm sorry that you got murdered by my boy Kendrick. You would yeah, say that? Bullshit. Yeah. I'll ask for a picture. <laughs> oh, shit. All right, I'll say. Nah. And then if he diss you, he's he's wrong. If he no, did, he if, 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 okay. if, if he if, me freestyle. Oh god! If, if he was to diss her or somebody around, <laughs> Actually, say, get your first. stupid ass out of here. He's that's what I was saying. Yeah, he's an he's asshole. He's a he's a I would girl. tell him. Yeah, sure. But I would tell Why? him too. I would tell him too. Like, thank you for making. I'm clear. I'm sure you heard the episode. So I'm thank you for making that diss track title for me. He'd be like, "Who the fuck are you?" <laughs> I'm going to say, I'm Taylor Mae. Don't act like that because you titled your song for me. This is why, I'm telling you, man, this is why <laughs> it, it, it don't, really, this shit, it yeah, don't even, don't even, like, let people dangerous. think whatever it is that they yeah. think, yo. The same way people believe what they want to believe, let them stay in their bubbles and their echo chamber. Please, Just please. Just don't go over there. The internet is not reality. It's not. It's, it's, it's not. not. It's reality. absolutely positive. But it does not. feel like it. Even, even for, yo, even I for put us. Up, I put up a picture of, I have a picture with Drake already, and I put that up. People were telling me to take it down. <laughs> They're like, no. no. They were. On the comments, How like, take that you shit down. The... Hmm. You don't think it's crazy to listen to a bunch of strangers about your life? Like, seriously. What? Like, you don't think it's wild to, like, get online and read Reddit or look at tweets or YouTube videos and let a bunch of strangers dictate how you move? You don't think that's weird? Yeah, you it shouldn't is. do that. It is very weird. You shouldn't do. Why, why are you even saying that? Yeah. Because she just said that a bunch of people hit her and told her to take it down. Like oh. I didn't take it. I know you didn't take, it, but the fact that you would even listen, like why? Yeah, you I have didn't to listen. I just read the comments. And, and what do I always? And I tell Taylor this all the time. <laughs> I can tell when somebody's just being influenced by social media. Oh, dude, it's the same talking points. Same. Anytime you see people regurgitate like the same three or four talking points, you're like, oh yeah. You don't think for yourself at, at all. all. You're just trying to fit in and you feel the trend going in this direction. You just want everybody in your community to know, hey, hey, I also agree with you. Hey, I, I, hey, I, can I still be in your group? Can I, will you guys still like me? Will you not leave That's me right. out? It's the most needy shit. But at the, at the same time, I have empathy because not everybody has, you know, I guess not everybody has what it takes to uh, stand on their opinion. That's right. Most people are probably just do want to fit in and they and, That's right. and then they seek out 
Yeah. And like most. See, it's hard being a human being, too. That's the other thing. It's hard. It, it, I'm going to tell you another word we can throw away now contrarian. Oh. And the reason I say we should be able to throw that word away because. You like if you're just a person who thinks for their self, yeah, and you don't go with the social media mm -hmm. trends, mm -hmm. they'll call you a contrarian. Oh yeah, that's how just, they just that's how they bully like, you for having your own opinion. Yes, because they're like, hey, you better come on with this opinion right here, because nobody wants nobody wants the outsider to succeed because it makes them look like a follower. Yes, so they're like, but if we're all followers, then hey, if we're all followers, I'm not a loser for being a follower. Yes, you are. <laughs> yeah, and the biggest I'm gonna and, and I, I I've been thinking about this too, man. It's the grift, though, bro. It's, it's a so grift, much, but people are starting to figure it out now. I feel like I think people are starting to like learn. They're like, oh shit, oh you can make money off of certain things, and there are certain opinions, and you see these certain things continually being regurgitated, and then you see reality really not matching up. Yeah, you're like, whoa, whoa. one thing is happening here. This yeah. is reality. This is what's happening in person, and then one thing is happening on the internet. Oh, this is yeah. something somebody's making money off of. And you're they're giving, taking advantage of You're giving of the people too much credit. I don't see people you don't actually think so? spotting that. And I, I, think, I, think people, I think people can smell when you're not being authentic. And I think that we live in this world. I'm going to tell you who's, who I think is really you see fucking it, shit no, up. Hold on real quick. You see it, this, you've seen it with literally this battle. I think this battle is like the tipping point within hip hop. Like this is a perfect example because you saw the people, the the the, the accounts that we follow and we love yeah. that are clearly siding with Drake, not being objective and At just all. supporting Drake. Like to me, this has been like the most transparent you've ever seen it. You're like, oh wow, these people love this guy. That's their guy. They love him in the same way we love the Knicks. And they're gonna ride for him no matter what. No matter what. They're gonna put out information that supports him no matter what. Like to me, this is like all the conversation on the internet is. It's like, oh wow, those sources that we thought were gonna be objective about what's happening are are not exactly they're objective. Fans. They're, no. they're, 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 they're super fans of an artist that they've probably loved for, for years. I don't blame them for having that. But at yeah. the same time, now we have to look through through the lens of the information as fans of this one guy. Oh, okay. I, I think, and people, I think that, I'm sorry, I think that that's starting to happen with like all aspects of the internet. I agree with you. Happening with Ben Shapiro, happening with Candace Owens. Happen, people are starting to go, oh, wait a minute. What? You guys have something that you care about that is more important than the news or the truth. Oh, shit. And you see all this conversation right now going, I thought that when people just posted things that this was the truth, but now they're realizing people are just posting things that confirm either their feelings, which is rare, or the feelings of the masses. And, most, people have opted, yeah. most, people, and, and, and most people have opted for immediate ratings impact or oh, yeah. viewership yeah. impact over building trust. And it's very short-sighted. Short-sighted. How do you build a real franchise on anything except trust? It's like human relationships. Mm -hmm. Like like the reason we all in this room have the relationship we have is because we trust each other. Mm -hmm. Like I, I want to be the type of personality that my audience can trust me. Good, bad, indifferent, ugly, whatever it is, yep. I trust that guy to always tell me exactly what he's feeling or exactly how he's seeing Authenticity. Things. People aren't doing that anymore. And I think that the reason that a lot of folks aren't able to build the audiences they want to have, like they'll look at Andrew, they'll look at me and they'll be like, why do these, why do these people have the audiences that they have? It's because we're really not trying to do anything except for, I believe, be the most authentic versions of ourselves mm. at all times. Like, I think that is the hardest thing to do. Wake up in the morning yeah. and literally be honest, not with other people, with yourself. Yes. And and that honesty with yourself changes as you change. That's right. I think that's one of the things that's been very easy for both of us to create because we are trying to be authentic. That's been like my experience. I'm sure it's been your experience throughout entertainment. How can I be as close as I can to my authentic version of myself throughout this process? When I was broke and I had one pair of Jordans that I wear every single Brilliant Idiots, that was the most authentic version of myself. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about whatever. When I get a couple bucks, I'm talking about my life having a couple bucks. I'm not trying to brag. I'm going, this is what I'm going through. That's right. These are the things I find funny about it. These are the things I find stupid about. It. These are the things I find awesome about it. I know how to lie. I don't want to create that way. It is very easy to create through lies and pacify your audience and give your audience whatever the, whatever right. they think they want. But I think in the long run, they resent that. It don't last. And it's that's why you see these, there are certain things that pop up. They're like, even like pods and shows, they pop up for a week because they're don't. satisfying what people want for that week or two weeks. 
But then all of a sudden they start to trickle down. That's right. Because they just had utility for a week or two. Mm -hmm. They weren't truly giving people what they wanted. And what I assume that is, is like an authentic version of your life. Now, sometimes our lives are gonna move in different directions than the, than the people that are consuming the content. That's okay also. They can choose to go somewhere else. They can choose to find something else that they like. But I'm not gonna pretend just because I'm like, oh, I need to hold on to you guys. I have to live my life. You have to live your life That's as right. is. Yeah. And, and you might lose some people. And that means you're gonna, yeah. you're gonna lose some people, right. but maybe you get other people along the way. That's right. Now, now I'm a fucking parent. You know what I mean? Now the conversations we have on the pod are probably gonna be about our daughters. And, and people are hearing you, people can hear your stand up or hear us on the podcast. I've heard you know how many people I've heard say to me, yo, that shit Andrew said, yo, on stage, that shit he's doing now brings tears to my eyes. Like, I'm not even joking. Like, literally, like, I've heard several people say that to me. That's being the true, authentic version of yourself. You look crazy up there still talking about heavies. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just, I'm just saying. Like, yeah, you look, yeah, I yeah. look insane still sniffing seats. Yeah. Mm. Like, We're we going to do it from time to time. <laughs> but it's not going to be the majority. For the culture. For the culture. You know <laughs> what I mean? We got to reminisce. That's for we the culture. Nostalgia. That's it. Sniff yes. my wife's seat when she get up. Y'all want this? <laughs> this what y'all want? You know what I mean? Like, for the culture. Yeah. But you know, you know who else I think is fucking shit up? The, the highly educated. Talk to me about this. This is the academic. I, I agree with you on this, but the academics, the people with PhDs and doctor in front of their name, because I'm learning that a lot of these people they're 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 not fluid in their thinking at all, and a lot of them don't have lived experience. They only have what they've read in these books and what they've learned in these classrooms. There's an arrogance, and to there's that. an arrogance I'm a to doctor. them. Doctor, yes. At an Ivy League institution. Yes. Whatever I say must be right. Yes. You should all listen to what I'm yes. saying. Yes, yes. There's a, there's a very low emotional intelligence to them. Nothing. And they really don't understand people. And I'm noticing that. I'm not, I'm just, I, I, it's not even just people who like, you know, major in something like, you know, uh, African, -American, African American studies. I'm talking about the people that are psychologists who should yeah. actually know people. I'm realizing like, oh, you don't really know people. People. They're also biased. They're also people. They also yeah. have a feeling inside and they just want to confirm. They built their whole academic career oftentimes on one theory. Yeah, so their yeah, whole yeah. life is dependent on this theory being correct. So they're going to fight tooth and nail for it. Yeah. Even if everybody's like, uh, that's not really how things work. And I don't think yeah. that that's going to function well in society. It doesn't matter. They know better. And they have that hubris. They have that arrogance. They have that ego to continue to push it through. I think you're on to something and, big. And, and I think they're ruining, I think they're ruining things because they're supposed to be the experts. So if they're the ones that are actually sounding stupid to regular everyday people who have not had that level of education, it's like, well, what type of world are we living in? And then, then? they're educating these young, impressionable 18-year-olds. Yes. Yep. And now these 18-year-olds are pushing these ideas on these people who are like, I don't relate to those at all. What the fuck are you talking about? Why? And there's this huge chasm. The people who are the educated, uh, uh, privileged elites, if you yeah. will. And the rest of us who are like, what you're talking about maybe makes sense within like a hypothetical discussion but doesn't actually function in society where the that's rest of us right. live. Like, like you're a scholar. But you think I'm dumb not for not getting it. That's right. And it's like, fuck you, dude. Yeah, you're a scholar. Yeah, yeah. But you're not a thought leader. Mm. And the reason you're not a thought leader is because you're following these, these idiots' thoughts on social media. Yeah, yeah. You can't tell me that you're an academic and you know you're 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 at the highest levels of education, but you're following what people are saying on Reddit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like yeah. you're 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 basing your your fucking commentary off what people what bot might be saying to you on Twitter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, 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 and how smart are you if you limit yourself to just this little small echo chamber mm -hmm. of people online? Yo, get offline and go out and smell some air. Yeah. Talk to people. Add some lived experience to those book smarts. Yeah. You know what I mean? Instead of like looking at just statistics and numbers, mm -hmm. go out here and have a conversation. Yo, we be talking about New York, right? And you know, you live here in New York. Of course. Do you think New York is safe? Yes. You think it's a safe place? No, well, but, but safe based on what I have known my whole life living here? Yes, you, you, you live here. Yes. Safe right now in this moment. I don't think New York is ever safe. Okay. But it's not that different from my experience growing up. A boom. I also live in boom. an incredibly safe area in New York. Exactly. Like, yes. they, you know what I'm saying? Yes. Like, I also have a very low bar for safety. 
you know, I grew up as like a kid getting yeah, yeah. fucking, you know, robbed or getting into a little like. <laughs> yeah. So like yeah, yeah, the experiences yeah. I yeah. had as a child yeah. are like nothing, and most people have ever gone through yes. that live in the suburbs in some comfy area. Yeah, but it, it, New York's it, definitely safer now than it was than when we were kids. Years ago. Absolutely, but, but you have older people now who say otherwise because of things that they're seeing now. Because of the way they're seeing the city now. But they're seeing more shit because of... Probably social media, exactly. probably because of the news. Who knows what it is? All I'm simply saying is, like, you'll have people who will just simply look at stats, yeah. right? And they'll say, well, New York is one of the safest big cities in America. But does that mean it's safe? Mm. Or does that just mean crime is down from four years ago it's true. during COVID? Like, you know what I mean? Like, I also, think yeah, like, I wouldn't use the words safe. Perspective on safety is very important, too. Mm -hmm. Like, if we told women, for this is a perfect example of that, about the stats thing mm -hmm. and why the stats might not make sense. Men get in way more physical altercations than women. It's not even close. It is way more dangerous to be a man. Walking down the street as a man is 100 times more dangerous as a woman. There's way more chance some guy's going to bump into you, right. some guy's going to try to start a fight with That's you right. at a bar, et cetera, than a woman. That being said, if your wife or my wife or Taylor or anybody came to us and they were like, hey, I, as a woman, I just don't feel safe walking down the street, even though the stats don't add up, we're going, yeah, because you know at any point in time a guy might fucking right. grab you and drag you behind a car. They could you saw that shit that happened in the it Bronx? It was terrifying. The fuck? So it's like that. the, the fact that those things could happen is going to play into your psychology. And if some nerd goes, well, technically, it's way more dangerous to be a man than a woman. You shouldn't feel unsafe at all. It's like, yeah, that's cute. Let me show those stats to the guy who throws a fucking belt around my neck that's and right. drags me behind a car. That's right. So I, I, I know this sounds crazy, but like sometimes the stats don't equate to what pe someone's lived experience is. And that's all I'm saying. Yeah. So you'll have these scholars who look at the stats and the numbers, but they'll argue with people who actually live in these cities. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. That's the problem, I think, sometimes with being an academic or a scholar, is everything that you're saying is based off data, yeah. right? And numbers and statistics. I live here. <laughs> you Yo, you see saying? somebody Go gets, argue about the, the You see somebody get snuffed on the subway, right? The next day, you got to take the subway in the morning and the night. Mm -hmm. What are you thinking about? You're not getting thinking about the, on the subway. You're That's thinking right. about the guy getting snuffed on the subway. But I think you have to combine both your feeling of your lived experience plus the stats. Because if you just go off your lived experience or your feeling, one, then that's wrong. No, no, that's no. no. The one thousand percent echo chamber that you. No, no, no. One thousand percent. Oh, yes. I think I think it's I think it is a combination of both. I, I think that's what getting to actual truth is. Yes. But I do think what Charlotte's bringing up is like these people are doing a disservice to what it's like to exist uh, exist emotionally in an environment. Yeah. For example, like if you grow up in a rough neighborhood, you're used to uh, some violence maybe happening around you. All of a sudden, you become a little numb to the violence, kind of like we did growing up. Like when all your friends get robbed, it's almost like a rite of passage. It's it's a crazy thing. Like every one of my boys got their North Face shit stolen in some way. And you know myself where included. not to wear your North Face. Exactly. So now, <laughs> now all of a sudden, if my parents are like, do you feel unsafe? I'm like, nah. Like this is just what happens. Mm -hmm. It becomes the norm. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. When if you compared that to someone in the suburbs who never got to worry about their their jacket getting stolen, Ooh. they'd be like, they'd be like, man, the city must. I would be terrified to be in a city. The stats don't line up. Yeah. And I think that's just what, I, I imagine that's yeah, what you're trying to say. You've got to combine them. Yeah, like, and, it, and you cannot, people that have, it's hard to argue with scholars when all they keep presenting is stats. They just show you this data no as if the experience. data is the whole picture, but the data doesn't speak to what you feel emotionally. And they don't like data when it comes to things that they want to be right. So if you're having this same conversation about, let's say, black people and police brutality. Yeah. First thing that a lot of people will do is show you the numbers and they'll show you the numbers and say, hey, this isn't this isn't even really a, a, a issue. This shouldn't be top of the list, mm -hmm. you know, for black people. But you're like, no way. Mm -hmm. I've seen, we've seen George Floyd, we've seen Sandra Bland, we've seen all of these things. It's the same scenario. But you'll have, and it happens all the time, conservatives do this all the time. They're like, no, look at the statistics. The statistics say otherwise. But you're like, hello, yeah. McFly. Well, here's the thing, here's the thing. You're showing me the statistics, right? I'm, I'm not saying you. Those, the conservatives are showing me the statistics. But the statistics that my life is based on That's right. are how many times I turn on the TV and I see this happening to black people. Mm -hmm. So while 
it, let's say, for example, the TV showed the exact statistical analysis of how many black people are getting arrested and white people, or how many black people committing crimes, white, white, white people, whatever it is, like they actually showed it. Then we might have a more reasonable concern about these issues. But if it skews in one direction, which I think it does, I think they have data for that, where like they're way more, uh, they show way more crimes of when black people on white people mm -hmm. on TV than they do the other way around. Oh, yeah. 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 I, 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 yeah. Absolutely. And, and, and why do they do it? The algorithm, right? They know what the people want. That's they're right. feeding into the fears of the people. White people, the majority, and their fear is that these dangerous black people are going to come around. Are, are they doing with Muslims? Are they doing with, with uh, pro Palestinian people now? So, like, absolutely. So even if the data says one thing, our data, the shit we're consuming on a regular basis tells a different narrative. Yep. And our emotions are based on the data we consume. So show me this other bullshit data. That's cute. I've already seen this side. That's right. So don't talk to me about the data. Talk to the news corporations. Talk to these That's people right. that are disseminating this information that's creating that bias. These news corporations do not care about truth. They care about immediate ratings. Yeah. Now, now they care about immediate engagement on social media. That's why there's no trusted outlets. Like right now, the era we live in, the only trusted people are going to be the personalities. Like there's not yeah. one institution you can trust for but, sure. But you know what's so funny? Is it like... They're all businesses. You saw, right you saw it like independent media, right? This is my favorite shit. Independent media went, you can't trust... The news corporations, you can't trust them because they're biased. All they do is serve their base and they will put whatever stories out there and information out there that will serve their base. And it took independent media five years before all of them started doing, not all of them, but a lot of them started doing the exact same exact thing, same thing, serving their base, right. finding out what their people want, continuing through. And you can look at creators online you can look at how long they've been creating. You can go back to their early videos and you could see what they wanted to do when they first started their That's career. Right. And then you could see the moment they found the thing that got clicks and views and how quickly they changed that algorithm. I, you're, you can look at your creators because there's a timeline of it. Some That's of right. them might even delete it because they pussy, but you can look at what they wanted to do in the beginning and what happened once they got views mm -hmm. and they start that grift and they start it's eating. All the e but people are gonna figure out about, find out about the grift. Well, I, 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 think I people, don't think so. That's that's the thing. I do, I do, Al. Al, they already started to find I, out. But I think there are, there must be just like two different types of people. There are people that search out authenticity and then there's people that just want confirmation. This is what it is. Talk about, you know what though? Alex is right. And I'll tell you, well, both of y'all are right. But no, no, the, I, I, I have a theory on this, but go, the, go, go. The grift, the grift, the grift uh, shifts with the wind. And what I mean by that is if you're giving people one thing, right, and people are eating it up, the moment you do something and then you go on Reddit or you go on Twitter and people start challenging you on that, then you start feeding into that. So you're constantly all, it's like a, it's like a restaurant where I can make, I can make whatever you want. I can make whatever you want. Like there's there's really no main dish. I can just give you I can give you whatever you want. Like here, 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 here. Yeah, here. if you have no authenticity. That's right. So you're yeah. constantly it's a constant grift. And that's what you got to be wary of. Those people who all they care about is the grift. That's right. But what I what I think will happen is I think that in that there were there were scams that worked when we were kids. Maybe it even worked on our generation. Salute to all the Nigerians. The Nigerians had those credit card scams, right? And it worked on our generation, maybe the generation above us. Mm -hmm. The next generation became privy to it. And they're like, oh, this isn't going to work. We're not going to do it. Mm -hmm. Our parents, that shit still works, but us, it's not going to work. Mm -hmm. And I feel like, uh, you know how like a clickbait headlines really worked on our generation? Even <laughs> maybe the generation below us, they Oof. really fucking worked. Oof. The generation below them, I've talked to some of the younger kids, right? Like, you know, Shifty and yeah. the guys working here. They're already going into headlines assuming they're fake. So every generation starts to, to basically parcel through information and learn what is good and what isn't good because it's not because they want it. It's because they look stupid when they believe it. And people don't like looking stupid. They don't like looking stupid. They believe a headline. Then they tell their friends and then the friends go, did you read the article? It actually says the exact opposite. And then they feel shame. That's right. And they feel guilt. And then all of a sudden they're like, Okay, maybe I need to start reading headlines. That's right. So you are reading the story. Yes. You can get them once. You can get them twice. But yeah. those are the people who surround themselves around people who are critically thinking. 
I'm telling you, there's a lot of people who just want the confirmation, and then they also surround themselves around all those same types of I people. I was not wrong. That no, no, just want the confirmation, so no one's, one ever, wrong. no one's ever yeah, going to point them out on the bullshit. And I, I think that's the other thing, too, that, that that's why... You just got to seek out... Ideally, you seek out people that have the same curiosity that you have, that have the same, like thirst for whatever it is you want like that's that's how i've always looked and i'm sure you feel the same way just like we always say it about brilliant idiots listeners we say it about flagrant it's just like we're looking for people who like having different opinions like having being able to bust balls and also like to dream like yeah. these three things are really important to us and i think that the people that are our like real hardcore base are the people who dream the people who make fucked up jokes and the people who are not tied to one specific opinion. That's right. And they're maybe- And willing to change their mind. And, yep. and I think Oof, casuals might pop bit. in. Casuals might pop in. They might really like our rap discussion or something like that. But then they might be like, oh, these guys dream too much. That shit is gay. <laughs> Why do these guys want to achieve all this shit? These fucking gay dudes trying to achieve things and make things cool but with their life or whatever like that. But the people that are maybe inspired by that are the ones that stick around and be like, man, these guys fucking, they just create some cool shit and they That's keep right. on wanting to make cool things. I like that. That makes me go. Mm -hmm. So I think at the end of the day, it's like, we'll take the casuals when we offer you utility, enjoy us, listen to what we do. But the core has to have those three things. We are who we say we are. Brilliant idiots. That's it. Like, that's it. I'm not an expert at anything. I just got some experiences, and I share my experiences. That's it. I have some feelings. I have some opinions. I share my feelings. I share my opinions. That's it. That New York Times article was the best headline ever. Charlamagne the God won't take sides. Mm. I fight myself every day to not be on either side because it's just impossible. Imagine someone trying to make you take a side. Like, it's how wild. Fucking, yo, how stupid is that? It's like, wild. You're basically going, yeah, we're not authentic. <laughs> but it's better to be inauthentic on this nah, side. Nah, man. It's yeah. In the middle is usually where the truth is. Yeah, we don't think for ourselves. Hey, come over. But but like, not thinking for yourself on this side is better. It, it, it's yeah. unbelievable. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, I'm telling you, the truth is usually in the middle. It's not black. It's not white. It's always a shade of gray yeah, yeah. where you can get that real, honest, authentic conversation. Hezzy, we got church, announce church announcements? Uh, yes, I'll be in uh, Abu Dhabi next week, Wednesday. Uh, for the Abu Dhabi Comedy Week, man. That's going to be crazy. And uh, so I'll see you guys there at Etihad Arena once again. Thank you guys for having me back. Uh, hopefully you're not bringing me there to a arrest me for what I said last time. I just thought about that. So <laughs> I, <love Abu> <laughs> I didn't think that. Yeah, that might happen. Okay. But uh, so I'll see you guys there. And then uh, we'll see you out in, uh, out in the Palm Springs area. We got a show out there and then Vegas. So thank you all so much. And DeAndreSchultz.com for uh, more shows and tickets and all that stuff. Thank you. Listen, for me, man, my new book, Get Honest or Die Lying, Why Small Talk Sucks, it'll be out uh, next week, May 21st. Um, I got a lot of dates that I'll be doing, man. May 21st, I'll be doing a, a a premiere live signing. That's just some online stuff that I'll be signing books with premiere. May 22nd, I'll be at the Barnes & Noble 5th Avenue at 1 p.m. And then I'll be at the Barnes & Noble in Paramus, New Jersey at 5 p.m. on May 22nd. May 23rd, I'll be at the Green Street friend school with Uncle Bobby's Coffee and Books at 7 p.m. in Philadelphia. Uh, May 25th, I'll be in Coral Gables, Florida at Books and Books at 2 p.m. May 29th, I'll be at uh, Charleston Music Hall in Charleston, South Carolina with Blue Bicycle Books at 7 p.m. May 30th, I'll be in Decatur, Georgia at First Baptist Church with Eagle Eye Bookshop. June 4th, I'll be at the Ark, and I'll have books for sale at the Ark, uh, courtesy of Mahogany Books in D.C., D.C., at 7 p.m. on June 4th. June 6th, I'm back in New York at the Strand Bookstore in New York City at 7 p.m. June 8th uh, at 2 p.m., I'll be at Books A Million in Arundel Mills in Hanover, Maryland. And June 13th, I'll be at the Barnes & Noble's Northwest in Las Vegas, Nevada at 7 p.m. And on June 14th, I'll be at the Barnes & Noble at the Grove in L.A. at 7 p.m. So go to WhySmallTalkSucks.com for all of those ticket details and to get your tickets to come to those events. I'll be signing books, taking pictures, all of that good stuff. You know another good book I'm reading right now, What's man? What's that? 
Bill Maher's book, What This Comedian Said Will Shock You. Oh, really? Yeah, I fuck with Bill. I mean, I watch Bill Maher every Friday, but I, I'm really enjoying um, his book because he's just another person who literally, you know, rails against the algorithm. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, he, 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 he goes hard at trying to not be on either side about anything, just wanting to see things objectively. Yeah. And by the way, his opinions are his opinions. It's like our opinions are our opinions. But at least he tries to see things from all angles yeah, credit before for he gets to whatever opinion he gets to. Yeah, he deserves credit for that, especially because he's been doing it for so long. So you've seen, like, politics change yep. while his show was still running. Yep. So in other words, like... He looks as if he's one guy, and then politics change in terms of what the party cares about, and now he gets positioned as the other guy. And it's like, I don't know, maybe he's always been that guy, and what the political parties care about has shifted. Well, he talks about that in the yeah. book, and if you hear a lot of people in politics talk, that's what they say. They're like, right. yo, the way liberals sound now is how Republicans sounded in the 90s. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Policing no, no, language. No, 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 no. Yes, the, the, policing the, language. You no, can't no, no. I'm, I'm, I've said, said it wrong. The way Republicans sound, sound now yes. is how liberals sounded in the 90s. And, and, and Bill Maher talks about in his book how they used to be the fun party. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, 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 like but, but, but now they're the prudes almost. Well, they're both switch. Yes, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. yes, 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 yes. Because remember, Republicans back in the day were like, rappers, don't say those bad words. And now Democrats are like, don't say the bad words. Mm. And Republicans are like, yo, free speech, say whatever you want. That's right. So it's clear that the party's interests have changed over years. And if you are somebody whose core identity hasn't changed, naturally, you're going to feel a shift within those parties. That's right. Taylor, what else we got, Taylor? I want y'all to um, see another bad bitch. Who's another bad chick? This guy right here. Who? Selfie. Meek living his best life, man. I don't know what island Meek on, but Meek having a good time. Yo, don't even. <laughs> That's why I don't understand why Meek <laughs> you gonna is stop even doing that shit. Wait, What island? What island do I don't you know think what island on? Meek is on. But, oh, I thought you said, I don't know what Al and Meek are on. No. no. <laughs> God damn. Yo, I was like, yo, yo, nah, because you've been I shooting. I got PTSD, God yo. damn. You be shooting. That's I like Envy early. Envy just screamed out early. I don't got an owl tattoo on my ass. <laughs> now I want to see your ass. I need to, cause, cause I don't Prove understand, it. Yeah. I don't understand why you would just yell that out. But Meek is clearly having a good time. I just That's why I don't understand why yesterday he just decided to... Go off on and 50 Cent. Go off on 50 Cent. Like, <laughs> there was no need to come to the defense of King Combs because, number one, King Combs knew what he was doing when he put that record out. Now, when I heard the record, I didn't hear King Combs dissing 50 Cent. I still haven't caught that reference. I don't hear it, you know? But everybody's saying that they feel like he's dissing 50 because, you know, he said, anybody scream no diddy at me, basically it's going to be an issue. Bro, that's all people going to be saying to you all summer. Yeah. And they definitely going to yeah. be saying it to you more now because you told them that they're not going to say it. But why is the kid trying to be tough about this? I, I, that's never going to go well. <laughs> Can it's we just... stop saying he's a kid, too? Yeah. How old is he? He's 20 fucking six. Oh, okay. But still, why, why be tough about it? Like, I'm with you. That's, like, it, but that's like all the kids, like T.I.'s son, Diddy's son. Like, <laughs> I guess you're right. Maybe there is this need to like prove yourself. Yeah. You, yeah. you, you grew up... You know, you grew up close to people who did come from the streets, but you're not from the streets, and you were probably always treated as such. So maybe yeah. you felt this need to prove, you know, like, hey, I am, I am just as you know tough as you guys. I will do. It. And the kid might be tough. I don't know him, but the way that it's going to be perceived online is always here is this rich kid trying to be something he's not. And 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 by the way. Like I said, I don't think that it was a 50 cent diss, but I can tell you one thing, King Combs. If I can give you one piece of advice, and maybe it's a piece of advice that your daddy should have gave you. Leave 50 cent. Oh, my God. <laughs> don't like, do I it. I mean, don't it's, do it's, it to it's, it's almost like one of the worst pieces of advice anybody like, probably ever gave his kids was can't stop, won't stop. Because sometimes you got to know when to fucking stop. And you, like, there's no, like, don't even, if I'm Diddy and I hear this song, I'm like, nah, well, we're not putting got, that out, uh, son. Uh, uh, uh. First of all, number one, you said, the feds, the feds missed, they should have checked the second house, the one next door. We own that one too. Stupid. Stupid. But yeah. why even put that out there, number one? Number two, things are quiet. Yeah. Same thing with me. Me, things are quiet. And I know you may not give a fuck, but why fuck up that tree when you know that tree gonna fall on you? Why stir up that hornet's nest? Leave it alone. 
50 wasn't bothering nobody. No, he 50's wasn't. 50's at home minding his business, mm -hmm. and here comes King Combs with a record. And now when 50 Cent gets to doing what 50 Cent does, Oof. everybody's, <laughs> I can't believe you'd be picking on a little boy. He's 26. You would pull your pistol on that little boy <laughs> if he came at you with some tough shit <laughs> and you wouldn't think twice about it. That is Cut a good it the point. fuck out, yo. Nah, 26 years old, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you could get you made get fun of. Up, yeah. yeah. Cut it out, man. But that is crazy. We all thought that he was a teenager still. Yeah, he looks pretty young. I guess he yeah. does look young. But he he takes a little shot at 50. What like, does he say? Like, um, he says, like, you're mad that we had your girl. We stretched her out or some shit. What was the line that he used? But he's kind of referring to Diddy's, I mean, 50's baby mama. Because, Damn. yeah. Dang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do some African idiots, Taylor. That, that's not good, my friend. No, nah, that's never good. That's yeah, never good. That's not Wait. good. Share? No. I mean, after. <laughs> Let's do some asking videos, Taylor. Oh, this is a good one. How do you... Oscar B. Savage on him says, how do you combat anxiety when it's at its fullest? Oh, man. Oscar B. Savage, that is such a great question. And I'll tell you something, man. That's funny that you would ask that because I've been dealing with some real, real, real bad anxiety the last couple of weeks. Wait, Why? I don't know. That's the point. That's the crazy part you think about it's it. It's about right? the book. No, nah, I don't think it's about the book. If I had to, I haven't, I haven't sat down with my therapist to get to get to the root of it, the root of it yet. It's not the book. Because I'm, 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 I'm the I'm, only reason I su suggest that is because um, there's a there's a vulnerability about putting something out, mm -hmm. and then once it's out, it's printed, it's done. There's nothing you could do to change it, and like to me, that could be anxiety inducing. You know, just putting something out and being like, okay, now it's here for people to criticize or people to love or people to hate. Yeah. So maybe that's something creeping up. Uh, it's just I think, suggestion. honestly, it's because I'm, I'm not fully stepping into what I know I should be stepping into. Oh, in your life, you're saying? Yeah, in my life. Do you want to share? Uh, not yet. Okay. But it's not even something to share. It's just something to do. Mm. So I just, I just need to fully step into it. I need to fully leave one thing behind and fully step into the next version of my life. Because, like, you know, your, your your body can literally, you can literally feel when it's time to step into that next phase mm -hmm. of whatever it is God has planned for you. And I haven't fully stepped into it. And all signs are right there. Like, this is what you need to be doing. What are you waiting on? Stop. Nope. Stop saying it's not time. Stop telling me it's not what it should be. Go and it's like, I got to do it. Mm -hmm. And until I do it, I'm going to keep feeling, I know I'm going to keep feeling like this. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. So, it's, I mean, it's actually a good problem to have. So, to answer your question, Oscar B. Savage, on him, how do you combat anxiety when it's at its fullest? I think that you have to really sit down with yourself and uh, get to the source of what that anxiety is. Get to what the root of that anxiety is, you know? Between that, oh, that's head? Yeah, you can answer for head. He hung up? I, yeah. Let me call him back and see what Head talking that about. That sounds so crazy. I know, I know. <laughs> yeah, like, when you say DJ Head. Like, like, you, can, you know, Letty came to your show too, yo. Yeah. You, you want to answer oh, for Head? head? You saw yeah, her? Yeah. No, I didn't see her, but she posted something. I think it was I think it was her crew that videotaped it. Yeah, she came to your show. She texted me. But, I, you know, what's up, Head? We doing the podcast, me and Schultz. What's up? Oh shit! What's up with the idiots, though? What? 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 <laughs> <laughs> What's the word? The world famous DJ Head. Pause. Oh, oh yeah, tell Envy he got to get over that shit. What? 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 what your head? No, nah, he he tried to pause that. I'm like, bro, it is. What no, it's head. just the way it sounds. It was crazy. He was like, I want DJ Head. <laughs> So it sounds like that could be any DJ. He got to clear that up for people that may not know you. You know what I'm saying? Have, yeah, no, that's host? crazy. That's for sure crazy. Hey, Schultz, man, what's up, man? Selling out the garden. That's what we own. Hey, man, we doing all right, bro. We doing all You having quite, quite a week, too. too. He sold out the forum, too. We did I okay. I did. I missed that show. You know what? I think shows don't fuck with black people when he come to L.A., bro. I, I don't know what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah agreed. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm going to hit you after the pot over. All right. Jeez. Listen. Um, <laughs> yeah, so Oscar, just get to the root of whatever it is, man, and don't lie to yourself about whatever it is because we always know what's causing us the anxiety. Even with what I said just now, I know what it is, but then I also know it's something else too. But 
it's 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 nothing I want to talk about because y'all going I'll, I'll tell y'all after the pod. But it's like you always know what it is. So I would just tell you, man, get to the root of what it is. Do you talk feel to that way? I mean, so I'm, I'm sure there's times where it's like it was helpful for you to to address it in therapy. Like I don't know, sometimes I feel like I don't exactly know what it is. Um, I think for the most part, I always hmm. know what it is. Right. Yeah, I think I do. I feel like you have an idea. You might not know the root cause, but like you have an idea of like, all right, this area of my life or this thing going on is yeah. kind of giving me some tension. So it's yeah. probably rooting from that, but I can't like ident like yeah. pinpoint exactly. Yeah. It is it is I, funny though, like have you guys had moments where you felt a lot of stress, you didn't know what was causing it, and then you you did something that you had to do, like you had a big event coming up or something like that, and then immediately felt yourself be so much better. And Absolutely. you're like, oh, that was the cause yeah. of this anxiety. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Another stuff, oh, the one other thing that causes me anxiety is like, I, I don't like being anywhere I don't want to be. And so right now in this moment, tonight, I got to be somewhere that I don't necessarily want to go to. Oh. But I have to go because. Can we talk about it? It's for somebody <laughs> that I love. You know, it's family a, member. It's, well, it's a party. Yeah, she's like a family member, so so it's a party, mm -hmm. and she don't even want to go there. So why? But it's because it's a corporate thing. So it's like one of those things where corporate threw a party, you know. Corporate threw a corporate throwing a party for this person, mm -hmm. and none of us want to be there on a random fucking Tuesday yeah. Tuesday night, you know. So we all gotta go, and I know she don't want to go. And I get, she just called me about 10 minutes ago. I guarantee when I call her back, she's going to be calling because she's, she's like me in a lot of ways. How can I get out of this tonight? And I'm going to tell her, simply say you don't want to go. Yeah, who, wait, who? And you're pregnant. Oh, hilarious. Oh, okay. Yeah, and yeah, you're yeah, pregnant. Yeah, you don't have to do that. You no. don't have to do things just because people want you to do things. Yeah. Okay? And they don't even want to do them either. That's the other That's thing. That's it! They feel like if they don't, that they're not respecting you as a colleague. But the respecting you as a colleague might be... You're stressing wow. me out. Yeah. You see this hairline? Um, being, being pregnant, that's like... Saying you have COVID in between 2020 yeah, and 2021. Yeah, nah, like, for real, you could get you out could of use that as an excuse. Yeah, yeah I don't feel true. good. Yeah, I got I call. night sickness. <laughs> give, us, <clears throat> give us one more, Taylor. Wow, 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 wow. I thought you was going to ask DJ Head about the, some of this Kendrick stuff. But I know, so you, I, I, I know you got to go. I was, but yeah. I talked to him about it every day, Dan. <laughs> what, uh. What's the most recent <laughs> lie you told for no reason at all? That's oh, phenomenal. Him. Miles him McCord, what's the most recent lie you told for no reason at all? What is the most recent oh, lie you told? Good. Go Why are you looking at me smiling? Because it was about me. What was it? I'm not going to say it on here. Tell me, what was it? I got one, I got one, I got what? one. I got one. What was it? Tell remind me, refresh my no. memory. What was it? <laughs> no. What was it? <laughs> Don't worry about it, but... Your BBL? I don't have no BBL. Stop so doing that. You got that. a BBL? BBL Taylor. Why y'all always do this when I'm about to go on vacation? Y'all always fucking do something. When you see Taylor posting those thirst traps, wearing, like big clothes to hide it. Uh, when you see Taylor posting those like, thirst traps, hide the healing part. Get the fuck out of here, y'all! Yeah. When you see Taylor tripping. posting those thirst traps next week, because her birthday is Thursday. Ooh, Doctor Miami made just it. Just know it. If y'all really Taylor. know what a real body looks like, yeah, you can look at me because all uh, the other girls are fake. Uh, What's your real reason, lie, Schultz? Yeah. <laughs> so after the Staples show, these these two actors come into the uh, to the to the green room from the show uh, Baby Reindeer. Have you heard of this show? I heard Fair of it. I haven't it's watched like it. Yet. Yeah, I ain't watched the show at all. I heard it's fantastic. Her is fantastic. Her is great. I watched this thing. I, all I saw literally was like the trailer that's, that comes on automatically while you're on Netflix. And they're in the green room, and I, I don't even know what to say, and I don't want to have small talk, and I'm just like, so I just, I, I call, the, the woman comes up, she's like, hey, great show, and I just, and I have nothing to say. So I just look her right in her eyes, I go, you are so talented. What you did on that show was absolutely <laughs> phenomenal. It was so incredible. Bro, I went, I went on for like two minutes. I haven't seen this woman do more than 30 seconds of acting in my entire life. Wow. For what, though? That's actually the greatest lie in the Here's industry. the thing. Here's the thing. She wasn't on the show. It was oh. the agent of the girl that was on the show. Hilarious. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm fucking I'm fucking I'm fucking Hilarious. I'm fucking Hilarious. I love those. I don't have, but you know what, though? I, I make it a point not to have small talks, but I'll be having real good conversation. 
Somebody said something to me about you Saturday that's so funny. I'll tell you afterwards. Though. All right, tell, <laughs> tell <laughs> me. Tell <laughs> me. I don't think people people don't realize Schultz be putting motherfuckers under pressure. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? And I was trying to explain to my wife why that is now. And I was like, because number one, Schultz is ruthless. Right, yeah. but he's smart, but he's also funny, and he has this massive audience of people that actually are influenced by him. So it's different if he says something about you because it could stick. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> what I say? Because she didn't understand why this guy said what he said mm -hmm. Saturday. Nobody really did until we all had to explain it, and it was just like it was just like a quick brief thing. Tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. Tell me. I tell you afterwards. <laughs> all right, and then the show. <laughs> As always, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're absolutely right. But if you listen to this podcast and think we're just a couple of idiots who don't know shit, you're right too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening. Peace.